Hey everyone, we got um, Finch here with another snake game. This time we've got Aladdin. I know some people pronounce it like Aladdin, like A-L-A-D-Y-N or whatever, but I pronounce it Aladdin, so I'm going to go with that against Real Squatters. He's using RW with the sunglasses as his um, name. But yeah, pretty straightforward there. Um, anyway, looking at the teams, Aladdin has what, in my opinion, is one of the coolest teams we've seen thus far. Um, it's got Specs, Executor, Alola form, which I've been using... Pretty much throughout open and i'm glad it's starting to catch on a bit it's really good um one of the things i've noticed about the new meta game is that a lot of teams are comprised of like pivot and Cinderor plus slowbro plus steelix or you could swap out steelix for like palosand or rhydon or Swine. and then there are also other slow pokemon that just pretty much run the tier um you get like you know pharaoh seeds you get the like mega Ardino on stall um guzzlord Etc. 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 I mean, in this game alone, there are potential for half of each team to be slower than 200 speed. Looking at Slowbro, Steelix, Incineroar could be Pivot or it could be Sword Dance. So that, that kind of depends. Sword Dance runs fast, Pivot runs slow. And on another team, it's um, the Exeggutor itself, and then Incineroar and Steelix as well. And I mean, some teams have like three or four Pokemon that are very slow. And the fact of the matter is that if you speed creep on Executor Alola, then it's going to be faster than that slow group of Pokemon. And it's got nice natural bulk. I think it's got somewhere in like the 80s or 90s in both HP and defense. And then special defense isn't great, but I mean, it's still able to live anything besides like an ice hit from full pretty much, or other dragon attacks, of course, from like Guzzlord and opposing. But yeah, um, the point being that it's got nice natural bulk, so it doesn't really get killed by one hit besides super effective moves. And with speed, it's able to outspeed at least two or three Pokemon on most teams, sometimes even four on balanced teams. And then you look, it has 125 base special attack, which is ridiculous for any standards, combined with Draco Meteor, Leaf Storm, Flamethrower, and I mean, usually I'm on Giga Drain, but you could also see Dragon Pulse or something else in the last slot. I don't, you, there's no need to run other coverage. But it's really just Dragon Pulse or Giga Drain, I'd say. But I mean, hey, maybe there's another move out there. I haven't really thought of it. Sorry, just getting a drink of water. That's really unprofessional. But anyway, yeah, I'm really high on Specs Executor. Alola. Now, personally, I like to pair it with Volturn, and I think Aladdin did a good job integrating this into his team. Apparently, Obi and Tangi helped teammate and manager. Manager and teammate, respectively, rather. Obi's manager, Tangelo, is a substitute in the team. But yeah, um, you get Pasimian, which is likely the choice scarfer, given the team has no other speed control. And Zatu almost always runs U-turn. Um, it could also be U-Turn and Sonora Pivot Set, which I think would make a lot of sense in this team to help with Vanillux. But maybe it's Swords Dance Z. Um, then you've got Stealth Rock on the Steelix, and Comfy presumably is Life Orb 3 attacks, just because that's the best set by far. But I've been seeing this random taunt set going around too. Apparently it was mentioned in my comments from a couple last videos too, so maybe that's, that's something to consider as well. But yeah, it's a pretty solid team. I don't really see many weaknesses. Um... I'd say this is probably the favorite team I've seen thus far, but there's definitely not a lot of bad teams out there either. Um, Realistic Waters has another um, an, an, another team, and it's pretty good besides the Golbat. I mean, you know how I feel about Golbat. It's just a pretty shitty Pokemon that's over-relied upon as defensive glue. However, in some matchups, it admittedly does shine, and here it's actually going to do a great job of pretty much shutting down the comfy, forcing Basimian to U-turn, and making it so that every time Executor comes in, it hesitates before clicking Leaf Storm. So, all of note. Um, yeah, anyway, rest of his team, he's got the defensive backbone of Steelix and Slowbro, so he can't really go wrong there. And Cinderor likely is Z on this team, just given that I don't see any other Z, but it could be a pivot variant as well, just because Vanillox is a pretty piece of, pretty big problem to the rest of the team. And then he's got... um. Sceptile, Life Orb Specs. Life Orb is better, in my opinion, in Passimian, where usually I'd say Scarf, but with Sceptile, you could run um, Bandit or the Z set Kushalos used as well. Um, which actually would be pretty cool in general, but not in this match specifically, because Comfy pretty much suits, suits it down. Unless the last move you run is Gunk, but I think they run Knockoff, yeah. So, anyway, um, matchup wise, I think Realistic Waters has a slight advantage. Maybe a pretty significant advantage, actually, because it's pretty much 6 vs 5, given that it's comfy Golbat. But um, Executor, if it clicks the right move, could do well. So let's see how it pans out here. Um, in terms of leads, I could see Passimian from both sides. I could also see Steelix from both sides. And Cinera maybe as well.
We're going to see Passimian and Passimian. Yep. Oh, but it's shiny. Right. I remember that. All right. So we're going to see a faster U-turn from Aladdin's, And then we're going to see oh, another bad shiny come out. 38% um, of net U-turn means that Realistic Waters is um, definitely choice banded. So that's of note. And anyway, we're going to see that too. U-turn into the Incineroar. Other Incineroar comes on in. And Sword Dance. Okay. Pause here. So... A lot of them have been running Tectonic Rage lately, as opposed to um, Incinium Z and Malicious Moonfall. But um, personally, I think that um, Z Incinium is just a bit better still. But Ground looks better in this matchup specifically. And if he has it, then I'd 100% click it here. Because plus one probably kills, or if not, then it, like basically puts it into like a couple of Softbox rounds of damage to um, Passimian. And it also gets rid of any Incineroar, unless it's like Shuka, which doesn't exist. But he might not be that, in which case the play still is just an Earthquake, straight up. Um, Aladdin sees that it's the Sword Dance variant and switch out to Passimian, which is going to force out. I think he might U-turn to take advantage of the Golbat. Yep. Golbat or Slurbo could have came there, and U-turn's better against both. And he gets Steelix in, so that's a nice play there, averting much trouble. But Realistic Water is still off to an early lead with the chip on Passimian. Nicely played early on. We're going to see set up rocks as the Golbat's forced out Slurbo. We're going to see Comfy come in on the Slurbo, take 19% from the Scald. Bait the Golbat in. Is it going to double switch? Nope, it doesn't seem like it. And Brandon Kiss can go near 19%. Just showing that Golbat really does hard wall this. And then Future Sight from the Slowbro does 30%. Oh, 29%. We're going to see Roost there from the Golbat. Is it going to defog? Nope, just going to go up to Simeon. Not a huge fan of this play, actually. I think Slowbro was just flat out better. But perhaps he predicted a. I don't know. But anyway, Choice Band did close combat. It's going to do 56% to Comfy there. Really just playing how strong it is. Um, Comfy was actually the right play from Aladdin there, because if you go Zatu on a U-turn, then it's in kind of a bind where you can't come into Steelix next time, and then you can potentially like forfeit rocks for the remainder of the game. Which is quite annoying for Incineroar and just general you know, gameplay, whereas Comfy, as I said, is useless. You're playing at 5 vs 4 when the opponent has the goal bat, so just be thankful that you got it in, take rocks once, and you kind of gain momentum with the Steelix switch after, and you fired it off to get momentum again. It was disposed of quickly. You see Zatu here. I imagine you just see a U-turn, although Roost is plausible. And U-turns to play. Are we going to see the... No, no Incineroar, interestingly enough. Are we just going to see U-turn out here? I think it has to U-turn out in respect of the rocks. Because you really don't want rocks getting up at this point. And you're going to see Earthquake there, figuring this, okay, middle ground. You can't Stealth Rock into Zatu. Although, I honestly, Stealth Rocks was just as good as Earthquake there, in my opinion. Because you want Stealth Rocks up. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to slow down. You'd rather have Stealth Rocks up than the Earthquake damage on Incineroar. And seeing a Stealth Rocks are already up on your side, it doesn't matter if you Stealth Rock into Zatu or Earthquake, because they both do absolutely nothing, and you don't lose anything. So I think Stealth Rock was actually better there. You either click Stealth Rock, you click Heavy Slam if you're Realistic Waters, but it's a minor detail as he went to Zatu, so it pretty much didn't matter. But yeah, um, <clears throat> regardless of that point, you see um, the Zatu come in, and it nightshades the incoming Slowbro, and then U-turns on it, doing 18% revone that is definitely an assault for Slowbro, as the max HP variant would have taken a lot less. So we're going to see Future Sight here, and Executor comes in, and Leaf Storm got the prediction correctly, so that's really big, because um, if you Leaf Stormed in the Golbat, then you lose your rocks in momentum there, potentially. Um, so Leaf Storm got it predicted, predicted correctly, because if you Drake go in the Steelix, the Steelix got a return or a double out, to like the Simeon, for example, take advantage of whatever. Whereas, um, if you Draco into Golbat, it dies. So it's pretty much a 50 50 Draco and Leaf Storm, which is kind of what I mentioned at Mantra. But Aladdin played that properly there. And I think Realistic Waters didn't really need to steal it. So that was a fine play by both. I think both are playing pretty well so far. Aside from like the little minor details, they just aren't a big deal at this point. They aren't adding up. So we're going to see um, Septile come on in here. I imagine it threatens the Executor out as it's locked into a minus two resistant move and it's got HP ice. And Realistic Waters makes a play that I want to highlight here because it was a really thoughtful play. Um, so. He knew that the Future Sight is going to come down this turn. So, therefore, Future Sight is going to do a ton to, say, um, Executor if it stays in, or Passimian, and even Steelix, it doesn't really like it. So, instead of HP icing, knowing that um, the Executor might stay in, and you'll take, like, 30% from minus 2 Leaf Storm, whatever, maybe more than that. But um, instead of staying in and clicking HP ice, which also could have bounced off Steelix, and um, Passimian could have ate it, and then you turned out to stay alive. Um, he focus blasted, knowing that um, he's probably going to try to eat the um, the Dream Eater with Incineroar. So focus blast hits that. So it's kind of like you're definitely going to get a lot of damage off no matter what you do. It kind of checkmated Aladdin for the turn, and the focus blast connected and rewarded him, and it was just a nice play. I feel like a lot of people might not have 
remembered the Dream Eater, and he played it really nicely there. So that um that gets rid of the Incineroar if he hits next turn, and he does. So yep, that puts him into a 5-4 position. But now I imagine Kasumi comes in and just U-turns so up. Momentum will be generated for the Aladdin side. Um, U-turn into Golbat, leaving it at 72%. Steelix comes in. If it's Curse, that's good for Aladdin, I'd say. Um, yeah, okay, so now Curse. So it can actually threaten the Golbat. So that's of note. Probably just see Rocks here. You could go Executor, but, I mean, you're not threatening the Golbat enough if you're not Dragon Pulse, so it's not worth it. Um, Slowbro, Executor, um... Are we going to see it take the damage? No, we're going to see Steelix come in on a knockoff. Nicely done. Now, here, big turn. So, there's no way in hell that Passimian stays in here. So, now my question is, do you go for an attack and try to threaten maybe something realistic Waters would predict you to do? Like, for example, Waters might predict Aladdin to try and get his Executor in on something obvious, like Slowbro, that would come in to check the Steelix. So, therefore, punishing the Executor would be Incineroar or Golbat. So would you predict them to come in and potentially click Earthquake or Heavy Slam respectively to get damage off on them or even Curse? Or would you predict a Slowbro to come in and go to your Executor? And this is almost like a, a double or triple kind of level prediction. Like, you know, you're predicting them to do this, so you do that, but what if they predict you to predict you to do that kind of thing? I feel like that was what this turn was. And I think Aladdin made the safer play, which at this point, while not a bad option, may have been something that I personally wouldn't have done. Um, it's not a misplay by any stretch of the imagination because this turn could go a number of ways. Like, honestly, it could go terribly wrong if you go to Executor and um, he even stays in with Knocker to go to Sceptile. So, like, yeah, um, that could have went really wrong if you go Executor. But here, I think you kind of had to take that risk given your position. And... He took a risk in Earthquake and staying in predicting realistic waters to take advantage of his play, and it didn't quite work out when he Earthquake. It did do 30% to slow, which pretty much negates the Regenerator and then some with Stealth Rock, and he gets it in here on a Future Sight, but now a Future Sight timer's up, and Passimian is of min minimal use, so... I guess the net is the same, seeing as you got this in, but the Future Sight damage is of note, because it's just going to mean the Zatu is pretty much useless here, leaving you one less thing to pivot around with and fodder to Sceptile. So now that puts it on 4-3. They pretty much traded, but now Executor's back in, and this is good. But we're going to see Draco, and it's going to miss here, which sucks for Aladdin. But now we're going to see something interesting, and I want to pause to highlight this. That did 55%. Later, you're going to see Draco doing like 49% plus as well. Now, first and foremost, that says that um, they have the calc up. Um, yeah, here. Wait, let me... So, you see, I, I my screen recorder is fucking dumb, but... 252 specs Draco to max Spadef. It does um it does this. It does 47.9 to 56.5. So it's max special defense, which in my opinion on a Nasalpha Slowbro is kind of silly because the damage output is so so big when you come to the Sulfur Spro, because you don't have the toxic to get progressive chip, you don't have the ability to outlast things without switching out his regenerator, you don't have slack off. You don't have any, like, block rest shenanigans either. So, while you're a special tank, sure, I feel like, especially on a team with Golbat, which is one of the biggest things to allow free turns to hard-hitting physical mods, you're going to want the special attack to da get some damage output. And at the time of the game, I also thought that this set was completely and utterly obsoleted by um, Slowking. I think I think I've said that in this Mod Twitch chat, but um, hold up. So let me um, zoom out here. Okay, here, perfect. So this is a slow king. Um, shit, let me... Okay, you could see up there, that's slow king, it says it in the corner. So um, this slow king with assault vest hits... It hits some... Um, well, shit, it doesn't fucking show. But, um, yeah, what the fuck? Okay, my PS is demented. Let me pause this. Hold up. All right, so fucking hypercam is shitty software. Besides the point, it hits... 255 defense and 284 special defense with that specific investment. Now let me show you what max special defense Slowbro hits. Max special defense Slowbro hits 284 special defense, the same special defense mark. That, that's what I basically EV the slow king to do. Hit the same special defense mark as um, the Slowbro with max special defense, but then it has two more defense. Now at the time, I thought the set was fully obsoleted by um, Slow King because it would be able to hit the same amount of 
special defense with more to invest in defense, thus making it higher. But it turns out that that only works the other way around, i.e. when you want to run a max physically defensive slow king, you might as well just use a mixed defense slow bro. I didn't know that it didn't go both ways, and that's why I thought that this set was quite literally obsolete, outdone, outclassed in every way, shape, or form by the slow bro. Because on Assault Fest, you can't even run, like, Nasty Plot, which is basically the only thing that um, you could, like, bluff on Slow King even over Slow Bro 2, which isn't even a set to begin with. But yeah, th there's no... Um, the set actually itself... So, so, so basically, I want to say that Realistic Water set, while I still think that it's kind of silly to not use Special Attack Investment or Modest on AV Slow Bro, it's not obsoleted by, um, by Slow King at all. It only goes the other way. So you basically, there's no reason to use max defense slow king, whereas there is reason to use max special defense slow bro. Anyway, I, I don't really know how stats works, but that, that's your daily um, EV explanation for the finish if, if you ever wanted one. There you go. So the set does make some sense, even if I don't agree with EV spread. But um, it helped here because that, um, that Draco only did 55%. And now we could fire off uh, Flamethrower for a mere 26%, which is uninvested damage, pretty much, even likely spreads. And then Draco here is going to do 42% to this fully defensive Golbat. Um, and then, yeah, it, the computer site's doing 55 which would have killed if it was modest, by the way. But besides the point. <laughs> Curse, um, Curse is going to let him potentially get rocks here, but is that enough? No, he goes to, he goes to Executor, and now... Um, Really nice play there by Aladdin because he has um, the Golbat in Draco range, but he doesn't have the Slowbro in Draco range given the EV spin. The max damage is up before it's like 56. So it's a bit of a 50 50 here. But let's say he Leaf Storms and the Slowbro dies, then Golbat comes in and heals up, or better yet, Sceptile comes in and clicks um, Leaf. Uh, uh, Click Giga Drain, honestly, and something dies. Because Giga Drain, two kills Executor, and Leaf Storm doesn't do enough, whereas two kills Steelix, and it kills the Pissimian. So you don't even have to issue guys. So um, staying in with Realistic Waters here was pretty much the um, way to clinch the game. Whereas if he fought it away, the Golbat, he could have potentially lost the game. Although he probably would have won anyway. It would have probably needed another misplay. But um, this was kind of just Realistic Waters up 4-3, and he was getting the Executor whittled down, and just staying in here... Won the game for sure, and he doesn't choke. He, he made the right play, so Realistic like Waters had a good matchup, but on top of that, he played a solid game through and through, besides that one little thing I mentioned before, and he just secures the game here. Aladdin has no win condition at this point, no win path. He just U turns out, Steelix. I mean, he could get rocks up, but look, Floorbro just comes in and Skull, while it doesn't kill, because again, it's not modest. Uh, it might kill the Passimian, actually. No, not even, but it gets the burn. Yeah, I mean, at this point, the game's over. And Steelix. Yeah, it doesn't kill again, not modest, but it does 61, and Earthquake's not going to kill. It looks like it has some speed creep, maybe. Or maybe this is a slower um, Steelix with Gyro Ball. I don't remember. It might be Heavy Slam for all I know. Regardless of that fact, um, yeah, Realistic Waters and Aladdin both played a pretty nice game here. I'd say it's probably the cleanest NU game as well. Nothing too relevant in terms of RNG. And Realistic Waters, with the better team matchup, also played a solid game and came up on top 4-0 when a game that was a bit closer than that in my opinion. But yeah, um, well played on both ends. Cool teams and I love things I get. Um, this is fantastic.